Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtie Media, and Apple Music has just come out with their top 100 albums of all time. Let's talk about it. So quick layout for this video, we're gonna quickly look through the whole 100 here, I'll give some highlights. Uh, we'll talk about some albums I think should have made it, some albums that I think shouldn't have made it. Look at a whole genre and subgenre uh, quantitative list of how many of each genre made it and see uh, which genres maybe reign supreme on the list. Uh, and then at the end, because this isn't primarily EDM channel, talk about uh, electronic music uh, and EDM music on this list in particular and why there's not a lot of it. So let's hop into it. Uh, the full list is down below in the link in the description if you wanna read it for yourself and look at it for yourself. But um, some stuff that I wanted to just kind of uh, go over or glance over some highlights for me personally. Again, also just note, I haven't listened to all 100 of these albums. There's no way I haven't listened to some of these albums in years. Um, yeah, so I don't know everything here. So this is just a couple things that I think are some big highlights and stuff I think you might be uh, more interested in to see. So uh, let's hop into that. Robin starts us off with Body Talk, uh, that record uh, at number 100. Uh, yeah, Hotel California by the Eagles, 99. Astroworld by Travis Scott's, 98. Uh, Lord. Uh, Pure Heroin at 96 there. Uh, Tyler, the Creator with Flower Boy at 92. Uh, Lady Gaga, the Fame Monster at 89. Uh, a different, uh, some more EDM styles there, I should say. Uh, Snoop Dogg with Doggy Style at 84. Uh, what else we got here? Eminem, the Marshall Mathers LP at 80. Uh, we got Madonna, Like a Prayer at 77. The Bad Bunny record at 76. Uh, we got SOS by SZA at 72. Uh, Kraftwerk, Trans Europe Express at 71. Uh, Metallica, Master of Puppets at 69. We've got Tupac, All Eyes on Me at 62. Uh, we got Arctic Monkeys AM at 59. Uh, Rihanna, Anti at 55. Uh, Guns N' Roses, Appetite for Destruction at 52, uh, Sign of the Times by Prince, 51, uh, Joshua Tree by U2 at 49, hitting in the top 50 there, Illmatic by Nas at 39, uh, Enter the Wu-Tang by 37, Beyonce by Beyonce at 36, Kid A, Radiohead, 33, uh, Led Zeppelin 2 uh, at, at 27, and then Dark Side of the Moon right above it at 28. Uh, Daft Punk Discovery, 23, uh, Revolver, The Beatles, 21, uh, The Chronic by Dre at 19, Taylor Swift's 1989 Taylor's version at 18, uh, 21 by Adele at 15, The Blueprint by Jay-Z at 13, OK Computer Radiohead, uh, 12, and then uh, from there on, uh, Lemonade by Beyonce is 10, Never Bind My Nirvana, then Back to Black by Amy Winehouse, Good Kid, Mad City, uh, Songs in the Key of Life, Blonde, Purple Rain, Abbey Road, Thriller and the Miseducation of Lauren Hill. That is your top 100 as per Apple Music. So right off the bat here, uh, what do I think of the list? Uh, from what I know, this is actually a pretty solid list. This seems to be pretty good. Uh, I'm very, very happy this isn't just a popularity contest. Um, obviously there's some aspect of it and what makes an album truly great does kind of um, apply itself to, is it popular to some extent? But in terms of pure quality, um, this is a pretty solid list. But in my opinion, I think there are three albums that really shouldn't be on this list more so than any. And I think only, only three really. Uh, number one, I, I think the Bad Bunny album at 76 doesn't need to be here. I, I don't get it. I get it for maybe the kind of reggaeton, like, um, Latin influence. There already is some of that all throughout this, uh, this top 100, but I, I think this is uh, a product of the more kind of modern, uh, style here. And this one, I think being a little bit of a, of a popularity throw in here. Um, I just don't think this one deserves to be at the spot. It's kind of just good, but not really great. Uh, I only gave it a once pass through, but I didn't think it was anything special. Another one I think suffers from recency bias uh, is the uh, SZA record with SOS. Again, great record. I actually think it's really solid. I think it's one of the better ones from uh, this decade so far uh, in the R&B world, but um, like on a top 100 list of all time, I don't think so. It didn't even really clean up in the award ceremonies either, and I know the Grammys are a whole other beast and they're kind of ridiculous. But um, yeah, this one I think is just more of a recency one where I don't think it has as much staying power as uh, maybe uh, Apple Music thought it's going to. And finally, the one that I think is the one that shouldn't be on the list more so than anything, the one that's very hotly debated right now and she's all over the place. You know her, you love her, you hate her. Taylor Swift, uh, 1989 Taylor's version at 18. 18 is crazy. Uh, so... <laughs> Um, I, I don't think this album is bad by any means. I don't think it's that bad. Uh, I, I think it's quite good. Um, but I don't think it deserves to be on this list. I think maybe, maybe top 500 ish, maybe 
but not in the top 20, not even close. Which brings us to uh, what I want to talk about in albums that I think should have made the list. Uh, and I think that's actually Taylor Swift's Folklore album. I, I think this one actually should have been the one album of hers that had the representation on this list. I think it's her best songwriting. I think it's some of her best production um, in terms of, uh, yeah, just this more folky singer songwriting, this more real intimate uh, storytelling from Taylor that uh, we don't really hear on anything other than, I guess, Evermore right after. But um, yeah, I think Folklore should have been, should have had its representation here. I don't think Taylor's version should have at all. Bit of a sleeper pick for me here, but I actually think RTJ4, Run the Jewels, specifically the number four uh, compilation album record, we don't ever call it. Um, it. This is fantastic. This is some of the best, most conscious, like political hip hop uh, out there, especially in uh, in this past decade of um, lots more uh, just um, even race wars and political unravel or unrest. And um, yeah, I think this album does a great job of talking about all the the current problems of uh, where we are even in, in 2024 and was perfectly uh, situated in its release cycle uh, with, with all that went down in the States uh, in the uh, 2020 to like 2022. So, um, and I mean, it's expanding upon now, but yeah, I think RTJ4 should have made it. This one's an interesting pick for me because uh, initially I actually was a little disappointed that Daft Punk's Random Access Memories was not on the list, but in hindsight, I really actually respect them for not putting on Random Access Memories. Uh, Daft Punk, obviously, fantastic. I love that Discovery's on the list. I think it's a perfect spot for it at 23. Um, but Ram really hasn't stood the test of time, I don't think. Um, it was phenomenal when it came out. It was so great. It was it was just another change of style for them into a more disco, um, like funky rhythm of uh, or realm of electronic music. Um, but it's not a record I find my, myself going back to a whole ton. And I'm a huge Daft Punk fan. Um, I've find myself just going to Discovery more often than not. And so um, I think it's a great record. I just don't actually think, if anything, maybe in like the top... Uh, like or the higher end of like 100 to like 90 or even 80. I think maybe you can make an argument for it, but I'm actually kind of happy that they didn't necessarily uh, put Random Access Memories on this list. And the number one one that I think got snubbed uh, that everyone is also talking about, Kendrick Lamar to Pimp a Butterfly. I don't know how this isn't on the list. Uh, this is genuinely shocking considering this is like a qualitative list that isn't talking about necessarily popularity and this being a concept record. Um, you have a lot of other massively concept records out there like Kid A, Radiohead, um, some of the print stuff, uh, David Bowie. Like there's just such this like, this like real extra, like deep in internal uh, thought presses and like production that comes into to Pimp a Butterfly, and there's other albums that show that same kind of style of music, and um, they're on there, and this one isn't for some reason. So, uh, To Pimp a Butterfly, for sure, needs to be uh, on this list. But now that we've seen the whole list, I wanted to give a kind of a genre breakdown of what really was the most popular, what really had the most representation on this list from Apple Music. Um, if you don't have, uh, if you don't want to see spoiler right now, just take a quick guess. What main subgenre of like, Pop, punk, rock, rap, dance, electronic, like soul, R&B. Which one do you think would be the number one? Because the answer is coming in three, two, one. Uh, it's rock. Uh, rock at a quarter of the albums had the overarching genre of rock, whether that's like punk rock or alt rock or pop rock. Um, rock is is a predominant one here with a hip hop uh, being at 21 uh, things here and then pop at 17, R&B at 14, electronic at five, soul at five, dance at four, jazz at three, punk at three, metal at two, and reggae at one. That is your entire list here. Uh, and so quickly, let's talk about this. Um, this makes a lot of sense to me. Um, I think hip hop and rock have, uh, actually, first of all, let's talk about rock. I think rock of all of the big genres has had the most um, staying power in popular, uh, in the music industry, uh, in the culture in the last 40, 50 years. I think rock has been in the limelight more so than any other genre other than I guess pop is pop is pop pop is weird but like in terms of in terms of what really is high quality and what people are really enjoying and what is still pretty popular um rock is there and you can do a ton with rock you can do soft rock you can do this kind of like jazzy rock you can do a really hardcore like you can you can do a lot with it and um this actually doesn't surprise me that it's it's up here as it is hip-hop being the second most represented uh, genre makes a ton of sense because uh you can say a lot with hip-hop you can say and do 
a lot, more so than any other genre, because it's so focused on its lyricism and its flow and what the, you're actually trying to convey and say. Obviously, there's a lot of hip-hop out there that's more of this, like, gangster hip-hop, where it's just like, if you with this, I'm the best, like, all this kind of stuff. Obviously, there's a lot of that out there, um, and there's some on this list, actually, but um, a lot of times, you can say some really deep, meaningful, impactful things on hip-hop records, uh, and that's why I think we see a ton of it at 21. 21 albums. And then pop and R&B make sense at the kind of 17, 14 represented here. Um, yeah, they're, they're just kind of your more standard-ish style of music that is a little bit more vanilla, more commercial friendly than anything else. And so it uh, makes a lot of sense. And then you got the other albums that are, that kind of have, need some representation here and there, like electronic, soul, dance, jazz, punk, metal, reggae. That just needs to have some representation. And I do think some of the best albums from those genres are actually here on this list. And specifically, if you want to look at actually actually the uh, sub genres. So within pop, within rock, within hip hop, uh, what has the most representation uh, with a minimum of three per uh, list here? Uh, the top ones are actually pop rock, contemporary R&B, East Coast hip hop, neo soul, singer songwriter, gangster rap, West Coast hip hop, alternative R&B, alternative rock, art rock, and hardcore hip hop with other ones being uh, lower there. So that is your full list for the kind of, um, yeah, sub genres for the main categories. And this also, like I said, the Beatles is a great example for why pop rock is so popular. You kind of mix the two most prominent genres of the past half millennium uh and and there you go that's that's what you get exactly so specifically let's talk about edm on this list because this is primarily an edm channel electronic dance music i've also differentiated dance from electronic because they are quite different because um dance here are albums like robin's record here or lady gaga or bad bunny and daft punk those are dance albums. But when you think of like electronic albums, that's a little different. You've got like your Bjork, you've got your Kraftwerk, your uh, Portishead, you've got your Massive Attack, your uh, Burial. Um, those are like way more of a different style. They're so different. Those last albums aren't danceable really albums. They're more meant to be electronic in, in nature. And so, um, yeah, those that's why I've sort of differentiated dance from electronic here on this list. But um, why is there not a ton of of EDM stuff on this list, electronic or dance. I guess there's technically nine for the whole list if you count both them in one, but um, it's because you, you can't really get that deep uh, with, with EDM specifically, and I don't think that's really a hot take. A lot of, specifically, let's talk about EDM music and the modern industry today, like a Porter Robinson or a Skrillex or a Chime even, for example, um, a lot of it is production-based, and you're not really saying a lot uh, with your lyricism. And that's not to say that people don't say a lot, it's just not the main focal point. People mainly listen to EDM for the beat, for the crazy synth runs, for your bass lines, for your um, nasty melodies and bass lines. And yeah, it, it, it's just, you listen to it for a very different style. And that's not to say it can't be good. Obviously there's some stuff on this list here, but for the most part, other than Daft Punk, think about like classically amazing electronic dance music records. Um, I think of like some Dead Mouse here, and then like even Avicii stuff that I'm thinking of isn't really like the tip top tier of like music albums of all time. There's some good stuff on there, but a lot of it's also pretty like vanilla music. And I don't think, again, I don't think this is a real hot take. Um, yeah, like even if you think about your, like the real big people like a David Guetta or Tiesto, their stuff will never be on here because um, it's just so surface level shallow with with what it really is doing. Um, but yeah, even like Skrillex, even Quest for Fire, uh, <laughs> obviously not the early stuff. I think it's a little too abrasive as early stuff, but um, like it's a good record, but it's really, it's really just like a fun record, a fun danceable stuff that isn't trying to to say too much. When you look at pretty much all of this list, this top 100, it's all saying something. It all has something real deep and real narratives that that follow through, that that you have this through line here that's happening all throughout these albums. Um, and EDM just often doesn't have that. So when I see a list like this that has very, very little EDM uh, representation, it makes sense to me. I understand that. And I understand like why there's not a ton of that here. It's the same, I, I hate to make this comparison. I hate to make it, but 
It's the same reason there's there's no country on here either, because uh, country is meant to be really shallow and just listen to on like a like a <laughs> just in a truck driving to the middle of nowhere. And that's not, I'm not saying EDM is, and I'm not bashing EDM at all for not having narratives and stuff. It's just we listen to EDM for a whole different purpose. The last thing I'll say on this is yes, there are EDM albums that have ton of depth and narrative storytelling and lyricism, and those are there. There's actually a lot of them. I, I don't hear me out. I'm not saying EDM is terrible. It's this bad genre. I obviously love it. Um, but there's not a, the, the amount of people that are doing that really good quality EDM and also are really, really popular, like a, a Daft Punk or a David Guetta or TS, so the ones that will be on the radar of Apple Music for a list like this. There's no one other than Daft Punk, personally. I, I just don't think there is, honestly. Um, and so I, I'm not bashing EDM at all. I think there's some, I think there are tons of albums that I listen to that clear maybe half of this list. Uh, maybe that's a little too much, but that clear a ton of this, um, but just aren't that, don't have that, 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 uh, that, that have the quality, but don't really have the, the commercialability, um, the commercial ability uh, to, to represent themselves even on a massive list like this. So um, I hope that makes a lot of sense. I hope I'm not dogging on EDM too much here. I'm just kind of making a, 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 a holistic look at this list and EDM as a whole. But um, yeah, I'd love to hear what you guys think uh, of this list as a whole, Apple Music, this whole whole thing. Uh, what do you think of the top 100 list here? What do you think of EDM not being here a whole ton? I'd love to hear any and all thoughts in the comment section below, but other than that, I'm Dakota from Brotime Media, and I'll see you guys in another video.